Has anyone else gone back and watched a movie that you thought was a love story and it's actually a horror film? Like this movie? Holy crap. Okay, I actually just went back and watched the whole thing again. Oh, because Ryan Gosling has been talking about how making uh, Barbie was actually just as hard as making this movie. <laughs> I was like, all right, I remember loving that movie and really like loving his character. And oh my God, this is not a love story. Actually, it is. This is actually one of the most accurate de depictions of why women don't want to marry men anymore. Because this guy is like every man. And every man and he's actually okay just bear just walk with me and you know spoiler alert but this came out like what 15 years ago or something if you haven't seen by now then sorry the movie starts off and I swear this god I can literally gauge how much healing <laughs> I've done by how I feel about this character what I remember being like he's such a good dad oh what a good dad and I can see why I thought that, but when you start off the movie, the opening scene, this man is drunk, sleeping on the lounge chair, his little king baby throne in the living room early in the morning. I don't know if that's where he slept that night, probably because he stays up watching TV all night and drinking like so many men. And he's, you know, so his daughter's up playing, looking for the dog that is lost. And she comes and wakes up daddy, who's like already either drunk from last night or already drunk in the morning. He's like, we have to go outside. He's like, okay. Okay, so he goes outside to look for this dog. So they go and look for this dog that's lost now. Probably his fault, but whatever. And then um, he takes his daughter into the room where his wife is trying to sleep in because she works very long hours as like a nurse or something. And he's like, let's go jump on mommy. Wakes her up. She's like, no, no. And he's just like, we're tigers, we're tigers. This woman is just trying to sleep. And she keeps saying, I'm trying to sleep. But he has to play with the daughter. He's just like the fun dad. This man is so exhausting, y'all. This man is so exhausting and all he is is another child. That is literally what the, just watch because right after that scene they're having breakfast and he's playing the instruments. He's the fun guy and mom is making breakfast, dressing the child, doing all of the stuff that children need done and dad's just the play guy. So then he starts eat the daughter doesn't like the oatmeal. He criticizes the breakfast his wife has just made. And then he's like, "Let's eat off the table, Frankie." And the mom, look, <clears throat> and the mom is like, oh, come on, Dean. I don't need to clean up after two kids. Okay, we're like five minutes into this film and I already see one of the biggest problems, which is what most women who are trying to raise children with men complain about is these men get to be the fun dad, but don't do any of the stuff that sucks, like clean, dress them, feed them, all that stuff. They just play games and literally create more work for their wives. And then the kids love dad because he's fun. And mom looks like the bad cop. So instead of actually eating breakfast, he plays like lizards or whatever and slurps, makes a mess. When the mom is like, come on, be a big girl, use your spoon. He's like, what do you mean be a big girl? What do you mean you're a big girl? You're a big girl now, sweetheart, so you don't have any fun? And this is how these dads, Cora, they make more work for their wives and they're the fun guy, and then make mom look like a jerk when she's literally already, the kid's late for school already. She's just trying to get them going, and dad is doing nothing but slowing them down. And then the girl's like, dad, you got me in trouble. And he's like, I'm sorry. It's like some, it's like a weird form of triangulation pitting his daughter against the mom because she's the bad one. Daddy just wants to play. And yet at the same time, he's just insistent that he loves her like crazy. Go, I love you like crazy. And she's just trying to leave. They're late. She's like, come on, we got to go. And this part right here, as she's backing out, hey, Cindy, put your seatbelt on. I got it. He keeps insisting, put your seatbelt on. Put your seatbelt on. Watch out for this guy. Watch out there. Which brings me to my next point. These men who create more work are not providers of anything other than more work and stress and aren't protectors of anyone because they don't even take care of themselves. Then have the audacity. This man is drinking in the morning. 
drinking in the morning, smokes all day, and has the audacity to think that he is somehow protecting his family by reminding his wife, who is late because of him, to put on her seatbelt. I love you, I love you, I'm looking out for you, look out for this guy, put on your seatbelt, like a little cop. But he is literally the person who is making her life nothing but harder. He is the danger in that house. And then has the audacity to be like, God, put on your seatbelt. What would she do without me? (sighs) I'm exhausted by this man. We are like seven minutes into this film. And I used to love this guy's character, which says so much about how messed up I was. I hate this man so much already. I swear to God, if this movie's about anything, it is that all men literally suck. That's what this movie is about. And I used to think it was a love story because the doctor at work, all he does is hit on her. He's trying to get her to take some promotion and because I got to have my best nurse up there with me. And she's nervous about talking about this with Dean for a reason because she knows that her boss is schmegsly harassing her and her husband is an unhinged king baby. Oh my God. Who is literally on his way to work drinking and smoking cigarettes and has the audacity to remind her to put on her seatbelt, fork off. So then on her way to home from work, she notices the dog is dead, the one that got loose. So she's all upset, goes to their child's play, is late because she works so much and is dealing with this dead dog. And so she tells him because he's already, he, he is a very intuitive man. He is so plugged into her, but like in a way that's actually scary because she can't hide anything from him, even though she should. So what does he say in support? How many times did I tell you to lock the freaking gate, huh? Blaming her for the death of this dog. Maybe she did forget to lock the gate, but maybe she is overwhelmed because she's raising a small child and a grown terrifying self-destructive child man too and yet she always has to keep it together she's got sunglasses on she's putting her makeup on trying to keep it together and dean's the fun guy you know trying to just always trying to you know be the fun one but guess what shocker when they take their kid to her father's house to take care of this the child so they can bury the dog that she just found He doesn't want to go inside because he can't smoke around the oxygen tank that her dad's on. So this man is also super disrespectful to her family. You know, like all he does is smoke. All he does is smoke and drink and complain like a little bung. And then uh, calls her the difficult one. But they keep cutting back to when he was younger. And they're like, the story is brilliantly laid out. It goes, keeps cutting back and forth between their, how they met to where they're at now. And he's explaining his whole philosophy. You know, when men get married, we marry like one girl. Because we're, you know, resistant the whole way until we meet the one girl. And we think I'd be an idiot not to marry this girl. She's so great. But it seems like the girls get to a place and they just kind of pick. Yeah, we get to pick. We're the ones who lose from marriage unless we pick well. Y'all benefit. Of course we get to pick. They just pick the best option or something. I know girls that get married and they're just like, oh, he's got a good job. I mean, they spend their whole life looking for Prince Charming. (laughs) Prince Charming because he has a job. And then they just like marry the guy that's got a good job and he's going to stick around. Like how lame. I swear to God, this is like a master class. Look at him. This is like a master class on red flags. Men who talk like this. I mean, I'm going to show you so many more quotes of this man. This man is literally a walking red flag. And I thought this was a love story. And the thing is, is that this story is so well written because it does make us really like Dean. He's like helping this old man move into a new apartment or, you know, a living facility because his house was like falling apart. And he, this man is, and this is why I liked him is he loves love. Oh, we love a man that loves love. He's looking at the wedding photos of the old man. And he's also, and this is actually very redeeming quality, is that he's very kind and he's very gentle with this man. And he's just very, like, nurturing. Dean has very nurturing qualities in him. But he's still a king baby. And he's an entitled prick who won't work on himself. So those, no one is ever all good or all bad. And so I can see how she fell for him. Because he came across that he was going to be taking care of her that he's a nurturer, that he just loves love. He's so romantic. But I don't care how much of that stuff a man has, if he is self-destructive and will not work on himself and will not grow and learn, all of that stuff means nothing because he will be a forking nightmare. Like he's a, he's just like, you know, he's just this hopeless romantic, but he doesn't understand what love is. 
And just like so many men, marriage is the finish line. That once he's got her, he has no plans to change. Okay, so Dean ends up burying the dog. We appreciate that he does that, right? And as much as we love a man who cries and an, a man in touch with his emotions, what we don't like is men who are over, over emotional, over sensitive and all that stuff are because they don't or won't learn emotional regulation. We love a man that cries. And this is where these, these inch smells are ridiculous. And then women don't want men to cry. No, we do. But this is what we don't want you to do. We love that he's crying about the dog. But you know what? What we don't love is a man who just drinks to deal with his emotions. I'm just tired. And she's, also, she's comforting him so much because he's so emotional. This man is exhausting. He is literally has the emotional maturity of a child. And it's not cute. It's not vulnerable. It's not, it doesn't make me go, oh, a man who's emotional. This is actually to me just as bad, if not worse, as like the big stoic football man who never shows emotion. This man is exhausting. And this is what so many women deal with. But they don't show this to the outside world. Only we see this. And while she is cleaning up the house... Because that's all she does is do the, the domestic labor in addition to working crazy hours. He's watching films about the dog and sitting there watching her clean. Drinking and smoking and crying about the dog while she gets to work. Okay, so in this, in this scenario, she doesn't get to cry. She doesn't get to have emotions because this king baby it takes up all the space in the room and then will literally watch her do everything while he feels his feelings, but at the same time avoids them by drinking. So then he has this great idea that they, he needs romance. He wants to spend some time with his wife. Let's get out of here. So he calls, he has a coupon for some cheap themed motel. And she's like, what? No. I'm not going to some cheesy Schmegs motel. I'm on call tomorrow. Means she could get called tomorrow and have to go and rush to work. So she doesn't want to go. But because this man's a gaslighting baby, he's like, no, stop being such an It's been me fun. Let's go. Because he's all about fun and romance. Will you just stop cleaning for a minute? Because I won't clean. Will you just stop cleaning? Because I want to go to a Schmegzo town. Come on, fork your stupid job. Let's go get drunk and make love. Fun. How fun. Like, bro, your idea of romance is going to a nasty, cheap theme motel. Although it did look kind of fun. To go get drunk. This is what drives me crazy. She already is like annoyed with his drinking problem. And he's like, come on to be a stick in the mud. Let's go get drunk. Let's drive two hours away. And you maybe have to get up at the crack of dawn to go work. But I want to get drunk and have schmags. I used to see this as him doing like bids for love and connection. And her just being like a Debbie Downer. And I hate that phrase. But that is what the that I thought she was. When really, she is stressed, a single married mom who's practical, wants to mourn the dog, is cleaning up, trying to get stuff together while she has childcare for one night, and this dude will not take no for an answer. He keeps, he will not leave her alone. He keeps saying, I don't want to, and he literally won't take no for an answer. She finally just gives in. Because the king baby, like real babies, are exhausting until you give them something to suck on what could have been a nice relaxing night at home now it's 7 30 at night he wants to drive two hours to go get drunk in a cheap motel and two hours back great how romantic so she meets her ex in the liquor store while she's picking up the booze they're gonna drink and this guy is such a tool he asks her if he's a, if she's cheated on her husband like this man just sucks so much and then gaslights her when she was like that's a weird question to ask and he was like What's basically what's wrong with you? She handles it well, but it's in the car with Dean that I realized this man is basically abusive at this point. This woman has to walk on eggshells around this man's anger, his fragile little ego. He can tell something's off, so he's looking at her again. His This is where like their, their intuition is like a superpower for like evil. He's like, what? She's like, crap. So she tells him she ran into that dude. She's like, you're never going to guess who I saw at the liquor market. The emotional labor that this woman does in this conversation. This conversation was so painful to watch. She's like, oh, yeah, I mean, guess who I ran into? And he was like, why? What, 
What did you say? Why did you talk to him? He gets so accusatory and defensive. And what, what do you mean you talked to him? She's like, well, he said hi. And I, so I said hi back. And he said, how are you doing? And he's like, Ugh. he's clearly so on edge. This, this man is abusive. He have, he's never struck her as far as I know. But this is an abusive man because he is, he is full of rage. And she is walking on eggshells around this man's rage all the time. He, and we're going to see throughout this whole movie, he punches things. The threat of violence is emotional abuse. That is emotional abuse. This man is abusive. Not when they first met, but honestly, he kind of sucked when they first met too. And so then she tries to like be like, no, you know, like, I mean, he's a loser and he's fat and he's, uh, and he's like, why do I care? Why would I care? Like everything he does is just like, oh my God. She's, she even says, I'm nervous. I, I, I think I said the wrong thing. And he was like, why? Why are you nervous? Literally, she's like nervous because this man does not hang handle anything well. And just mentioning this man's name, who they clearly have a history with, has set him off. And then she tries to say, like, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said anything. And he's like, why wouldn't you say anything? Why wouldn't you tell me? Like, everything is accusatory. Nothing she says can calm this, this enraged man down. And then he gets mad that she's nervous. What, what do you mean you're nervous? Like, look, she's just like, oh my God, what have I, oh, ah. And then in a gaslighty way, he's like, you know what? You can talk to whoever you want. You can do whatever you want. No, she can't. No, she can't. Fork you, dude. You will literally punish her. Even when she tries to tell you about something, you punish her. So what does she have to do? She has to smooth things over for the little baby. She grabs his hand to try to comfort her and he pulls it away after sighing. She gets out of the car and pretends to have to pee and runs into the woods and is like, this woman is in an abusive relationship. I can't believe I never saw it before. I was rooting for this couple and she's miserable and scared of him. So then we get a cut, uh, they flash back to the guy that she had run into the liquor store, which was the boyfriend of hers who was a wrestler, who constantly said BS to her and was like, come over. And she's like, I can't. Like, all these men are constantly pushing her to do things she doesn't want to do. Her ex-boyfriend, her current husband. So then we get a cut back to her talking to her grandma, which is like the only person who is good to her. Thank God she had a grandma. She's like, Grandma, what did, what did it feel like when you fell in love? And holy crap, y'all, I can't believe I'd never seen this before. Grandma goes, oh dear, I don't think I've found it. <laughs> so she's like, you mean not even with grandpa? And she's like, well, maybe a little in the beginning. He, but he didn't really have any regard for me as a person. So all these men who are always like, why can't we have traditional marriages? Why can't all these women be like my grandma was? Grandma was miserable, okay? This woman, like this is the problem women are still having, that their husbands don't regard them as a person. So then they show this horrifying scene of the, the, the home that she grew up in, which totally makes sense how she ended up with such a loser like Dean, where she sees her mom cook food for her dad and is very nervous around her dad the same way she is now around her own husband and we see the the husband say uh we're supposed to eat this garbage look at how afraid her mother is of her father granted this is grandpa who is taking care of her child right now who is a total duh and now grandpa is all sweet with her children. And this is so classic. How many people have had abusive parents? And then all of a sudden when they're grandparents, they're just like a different person. And then we cut back to grandma's advice. You got to be careful that person that you fall in love with and ask, is it worth it to you? I had no idea that this right here is what this movie is all about. It doesn't matter how much you love them. It's, it doesn't matter how all these amazing memories you have with them and how it was. Is it worth it to you? That is what women need to be asking themselves on a regular basis when they are with men. And she's like, I don't want to be like my parents because they didn't seem to love each other. I don't know if they just loved each other before I was born. Yeah, your mom probably loved him or tried to. 
but her dad didn't love her mom like so many men do not love their wives and the women who literally birthed their children and almost die doing so these men don't even see them as human and it seems as though not much has changed since our grandmas were trapped in marriages and couldn't divorce and the grandma gives her some really good advice she's like yeah you know it's not only about trusting the other person it's about do you trust yourself that is who you have to trust so we find out the real reason why other than her having um, an abusive father who role modeled a man hating his wife we find out really how she ended up with dean and that's because her current boyfriend um without her consent came inside of her first of all she's not enjoying this schmegs at all she doesn't seem to enjoy most of it except for when uh, Dean goes down on her. And they um, they tried to make this an NC-17 film for showing a woman getting pleasure. And Ryan Gosling, like this is when I first started to really like him as a, I don't know him, he could be a terrible person. But he seems to stand up for things a lot uh, when given the opportunity. And he was calling out the double standard of men getting BJs all the time and no big deal. And women getting pleasure and they want to make this an NC-17. Are you kidding me? Anyway, her boyfriend gets her pregnant against her will this is why you cannot trust men to pull out do not trust them so then we cut to how these two met she was at grandma taking care of grandma's and he was moving that old man into his place the guy who was obsessed with the old photos of and he saw her so he knocks on the door and he's like hey can i talk to you and she's like why and he's like i didn't steal any money and she's like uh what are you talking about because you know he was he was get paid cash or whatever this whole first exchange is not great. Even when he asked her her name, she's like, go away. And he's like, your name's go away. And like, it's all kind of cute and whatever. But it's actually not as romantic as I remember. He's just like saying nonsense and is like, gives him his, her his card and is like, please call me. And this is the funny part because this man is a hobo schedule, a gold digger. Like that is another lesson of this film. He's a king baby and a gold digger. Because he's like, um, call this number of the moving company I work for because I don't have a phone or a cell phone. <laughs> okay, loser, you don't even have a phone. Where do you live? You don't have a landline at your house? Like, this should have been her biggest red flag. Very persistent dude. Doesn't have any money. Doesn't even have a phone. Mind you, this is the man who is complaining that women just, why do women want a man with a good job who's going to stick around? <laughs> like a classic broke man who's just like, God, women are such gold diggers. So then they cut back to this hotel. <sighs> And he is like, look, we're inside a robot's Roberto. This whole scene is like, she doesn't want to be there. There's no windows in this place. And she's like, where are the windows? Because this man smokes all the time. He's smoking inside with no windows. Do you have, that is so gross. And then he's also like trying to be cute and funny. And he's calling like a crow. He's like, ah, ah. And she's like, oh my God. Like this woman does not want to have schmegs with this man because she is his mother and that feels weird to fork your son and he's just like oh and the whole movie he's complaining about how he just can't be rejected like this anymore god she's so heartless this movie perfectly summarizes why so many women divor are divorcing men and just don't want to have schmegs with men that they're married to because of this she even says it she's like pouring herself a drink she needs to drink to enjoy herself with this man she's like i thought the point of this was to have a night without kids but then she just tries to take a shower and while she he's like what are you doing she's like what what does it look like i'm doing and like so many men he's like oh you're getting all wet and naked and then he's like i'm gonna order some food what do you want she's like you know what I want. And this is what I mean. This is how men exhaust women. This man needs constant attention, constant validation, constant physical touch, and then asks her so many, won't leave her alone in peace to shower. And then asks her questions that he already knows the answers to, and she's so annoyed. She just wants to be left alone. She asks him to close the door, and guess what he does? Takes his clothes off, gets in the shower, and tries to go down on her. Now, most women would love that, right? Not not all. Not all women love that. But I certainly do. do. But she is so disgusted by this man. She's like, stop. Please come up. And then, guess what? He becomes a grumpy pants. Because she won't fork him. Because she just wanted to shower. And, he, and then he's just like, why are you being so grumpy? I don't know. I don't know. 
like a child. Me thinking mean grumpy. So he's punishing her yet again with a temper tantrum for not giving in to his demands of Schmegs. Not only is this man self-destructive and a terrible influence on himself, he's also like wants her to get drunk and now he's getting her to smoke cigarettes. I swear to God. These men have the worst impact on women. He doesn't care about her. Wear your seatbelt, but I'm going to be self-destructive and here, let's go get drunk, smoke some cigarettes. But I'm the protector who looks out for you, and takes care of you, and takes care of your kid. Now, one of the reasons why Ryan Gosling's character looks so good is because her ex is such trash. He tries to harass her while she's with her grandma and he's like, why would you talk to me? I, I miss you. Oh, whatever, you're too much. So yeah, in comparison to this guy, Ryan Gosling looks like a just a saint. But he's actually an emotionally abusive man. So then we cut back again to Dean's idea of love. Maybe I've seen too many movies, you know, and love at first sight. He's like, but you know, I, I felt like I knew her, you know? You ever got that feeling? He's talking to one of his work buddies. And his work buddy's like, yeah, but you actually really don't know her. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. I don't, huh? <laughs> Again, this man is a hopeless romantic, but he has no idea what love is. He comes from a broken home. He's never worked on himself. He won't actually do any of the really hard work. He's just looking for a woman to fix him. But he thinks he's in love, but he doesn't even know her. He just thinks she's beautiful and charming and all these things, but he doesn't know her and he certainly doesn't love her. So he ends up going back to the place where he first ran into her and ask grandma, hey, like the girl that was here, oh, uh, like what's her story? Because she hasn't called him and then ends up running into her on the bus. And like a cra like he seems like a crazy stalker. I would be scared if I were her. He, they just happened to end up on the same bus, although he went to go find her. And then he comes up and is like, can I sit here? You know, I just talked to your grandma. And she's like, oh my God, legit scared. Anyway, he, this whole conversation, this is their first real conversation. And it is actually horrifying. It's not cute. It's not uh, like romantic. Because after being like, no, no, I promise you I'm not stalking your grandma. He's like, look at this photo of that old man I found. Isn't his, his, his lady pretty? She's like, yeah. And he's like, so she's probably nuts because she's pretty. Because in my experience, the prettier girl is, the more nuts she is. And then he goes on this whole tirade about how people probably think that she's funny, but she's not funny because she's pretty. But they laugh at her, his, her jokes because she's pretty. Like he literally said this to her. So yeah, you're pretty, so you got to be nuts. She was like, how can you give someone a compliment and insult them at the same time? He's like, what? No. Gaslights her and being like, why are you so mad? Anyway, this whole conversation is not cute. And this is another red flag. A man literally putting you down. He keeps calling her pretty in all their encounters. But then has a, it's a backhanded compliment. Being like, oh, you must be able to get away with whatever. And then she talks about how she's going into medicine. He's like, girls like you, they look like you, they, you don't study medicine. Again, insulting her, basically being like, you're too pretty to be a doctor. And then this whole scene that I used to think was so cute and romantic is also horrifying. Because he sings a song for her and asked her to dance. And then the words of the songs were, um, broke your heart last night because I love you. <laughs> Everything about this man is toxic, except the fact that he helps old people and can be nurturing and caring at times, which is again, very realistic. Women don't fall in love with monsters. We fall in love with these, these men that this, my ex was like this. I fell for him because he like washed my hair and he cooked for me and he did all these really nurturing things in the beginning before he took, turned into a psychopath that I had to walk on eggshells around. And then this scene in the hotel is so classic too. They're eating food and she's like, hey, why don't you do something? You could do anything. You're so smart. You're a great singer. You. She's literally gassing this man up. And this is what so many women do. They believe in these men who don't believe in themselves. And this is why insecure men are the worst men on the planet to date. Because they will always bring you down. And they will exhaust you trying to cheer them on. She literally says all this amazing stuff about him. Like, you could do anything. Isn't there something you want to do? You could literally do anything. You're so amazing at so many things. He's like, I don't want to do stuff just to make money. She's like, it's not about making money. She literally wants this man to do something other than paint and drink. Because that's all he does. And exhaust her. And play with the kid. And he's like, I didn't want to be someone's dad. I didn't want to be married. Basically, this man is raising the child of that jerk that, that she ran into in the liquor store. 
And this is the thing. This man has been holding it over her head. Sure, he's a, he loves Frankie and is a great dad, but he uses that, that he just swooped in and did this thing favor for her as leverage to guilt her every time she tries to call him on his crap. And then this is where the real thing hits. I'd like to see you have a job where you didn't have to start drinking at 8 o'clock in the morning. And he's like, no, 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 I have a job where I get to drink at 8 o'clock in the morning. And this is the real problem. This man has no ambition. He doesn't want to change. He keeps telling him, like, this is a problem. And he's like, what's the problem? I get to drink and smoke and play. So this conversation that they have, besides her being like, you're a bum who just drinks at 8 in the morning and you hate your life and you could do anything, but you won't. And then he starts being like, boom, and she's like this is why I don't have adult conversations with you because you're incapable and then she even calls out she's like maybe one time you should try saying instead of saying what you think all the time maybe try thinking about what you before you say it because this man like a lot of men is just brutally honest you know a lot of women really fall for men because we're like oh but he's so honest at least he's honest yeah because he's not thoughtful and he doesn't care and he doesn't change and he's not even care about his impact because he says mean stuff to her all the time. And yet he thinks of himself as this loving, caring, nurturing, thoughtful man. He's not. He's a bully. And then she's so drunk because she has to get drunk to deal with this man. And he's all like, wake up. Don't go to sleep. Let's play. And he like falls on the floor and they have this really weird schmeg scene where he's like, come on, come on. And she's like, oh, I don't want to because she's not attracted to a baby. And then he basically keeps pressuring her and then finally she's like, okay, and she gives in. And then he's like, no, I can't do it like this. God, you're so mean. What, you want me to grape you? God, this man is so manipulative. This is so well written and acted. This movie is so good because this is how so many men are. What, I'm, I don't, I don't want, he won't work on himself. And then he wants to be romantic. And then he pressures her into schmegs all the time. And she says, no, 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 no. And then she finally gives in and, and, and does it, but is very cold about it. And then he's like, what? You want me to grape you? No, I'm too good for that. Fork you, dude. So she ends up hiding in the bathroom with the door closed and he's just banging on the door all violently. Oh my God. It's terrifying, terrifying man. But this scene right here, when he goes down on her, that's how, that's why she fell for him. Besides the fact that he wasn't as big of a jerk as her ex. Another red flag. It's always good to have a dude who, you know, knows how to eat, mm -hmm, eat this. But I swear to God, the men who are the best at eating this have been, in my experience, most of them have been trash. Not all, but most. Because he's a hobo sexual baby. He's a hobo gold digger. This is how they win you over. So then she finds out she's pregnant and uh, d is, you know, a little off. And he's like, something's wrong. Because again, he can always tell when something's off. He's like, tell me. And she's like, no. So then he threatens to unalive himself by jumping off the bridge. This is another thing abusers do. I'm going to unalive myself unless you do what I want me, me to do. And she's like, please come down. He's like, no, tell me. So then she tells him and he starts punching the fence because he's a violent man. So then she goes to get an abortion. And we find out that she lost her virginity at 13, has had been with like 25 partners since. Wonder why. Could it be that she's had nothing but men exploit her, abuse her, abuse her mother, treat her like crap? Like, God, this woman, I feel so bad for her. She deserves love so much, but she's never seen what it looks like. So, of course, she thinks Dean loves her. Now, we think Dean's such a great guy because he's in, you know, in the way took her to get in a bar. Her. And then she can't go through with it. And I actually really like the way they show this whole scene because they actually very caring with her. And they, as soon as she's like, I can't do it, they're like, okay, no problem. She tells him and he's supportive. Every woman wants to be held and treated like this. So these moments of tenderness that this man offers her is why she fell for him. Especially when he's like, let's do it. Let's be a family. I'll take care of your kid. That's not mine. The problem is Dean holds that over her head for their whole relationship. Anytime she is right about something, he needs to be to remind her, you know, he didn't choose this life. You know, he's, but he's a dad. He's a good dad. She's like, it's not your fault. So, of course, she gets a call from work while she's at this motel, totally wasted because Dean dragged her there two hours away to have a romantic night. She sneaks out because she just needs to get to work. And he's passed out on the floor. This man, all, like, he's, all he does is drink and get pass, and pass out. He's got a serious drinking problem like so many men. And he's a complete worthless dude. And then when, you know, he has to wake up at 11 a.m. to check out. He's like, God, where is she? Why won't she answer the phone? I'm going to kill her. So what does he do for breakfast? He drinks a lot of vodka, keeps smoking, 
and shows up at her workplace. We also find out that her ex, this is another reason why she ended up with this man, because she felt bad. She felt bad that he's going to take care of her kid, and she felt bad because her ex, who's also an abusive piece of crap, was calling her after he found out she's with some other dude, and is basically like, I'm going to kill him. So she tries to warn Dean, but not in time, and this prick comes and beats him up. So we feel really bad for Dean. You know, poor guy, raising a kid that's not his, getting beaten up by other men. But this is how men end up tricking us into loving them because this is the bad guy, so it makes Dean look like a great guy. So when she's back at work, her boss, who schmegsley harasses her, like, by the way, you know, you should take that promotion and get an apartment upstate, you know, and you can come and live there during the week and drive home and see your kid and your husband on the weekend. And, you know, we could hang out get dinner. She's like, I'm married. He's like, yeah, I know. I was just trying to help. And then she's really devastated because she's like, I thought you wanted me there because I'm good at my job. He's like, mm, yeah, not really. So then Dean shows up and this is where her coworker gets her in trouble because she's like, oh, you must be Dean. God, don't do this. You are going to get women unalived. Do not let their husbands know that you know they suck. So Dean shows up drunk to her workplace and he's like, oh, this is the place you spend all your time working. The place where you smile because he's jealous of that doctor who's schmegsly harassing her. Like this woman is literally, she can't get a break from any of these men. And he's like, she's like, why'd you show up here drunk? He's like, I was worried about you. I was worried. No, you weren't. No, you weren't, dude. So then the friend is like, I'm here if you need me. Don't let them brainwash you. Y'all don't do this. Because this whole situation escalated because that woman let this abusive man know that she's on to him. Don't do this. So she tries to get him to go. She even like risks letting him drive her car drunk just to get him out of there. He's like, you don't even care if I'm drunk. You don't care if I die, if I get in an accident. You don't have any time for me because you're always working at this stupid place. These people don't care about you. She's like, please just go home. She's trying so hard to de-escalate this situation. And he's like, yeah. But no, he won't leave. And she's like, I hate this man. I can't take him anymore. She basically is like, I want a divorce. I'm so over you. I'm so tired of being angry. I'm done having you drunk like this. That's what she wants is to stop self-destructing. Because here's the other thing. That stuff's expensive. All that money he spends on beer and cigarettes. What kind of provider are you if that's all you spend your money on? So she's like, she shouldn't have said this at work. Honestly, you got to be careful when you do this stuff because this man sabotaged her whole job she tried to tell him she doesn't love him got nothing left for you and he's like what do you just tell me what i need to do just tell me what i need to do i couldn't drive you crazy unless i loved you see what i mean this is what he really believed his idea of love is so messed up and we've been hearing it throughout this movie but i always thought that he was like this hopeless romantic my god he's like you want to hit me when they talk about reactive abuse which isn't even a great title because it's not abuse this man is full of rage and constantly scares her. And then he's like, hit me, hit me. He wants her to be violent with him so that she can look crazy and she can look like the person who's abusive, not him. And she's like, yeah, you're the bad guy. And I'm not me, like whatever. She's trying to call him out. He's like, oh, I'm the bad guy. Yes, Dean. And he's like, you don't think I'm a man? Watch this. And he basically tries to tear up the whole office. She's like, what are you talking about? It's not about being a man. You're a bully. No, I'm a man. I'm a big man. She just wants him to leave. And then these people intervene. He punches the, the, her boss. Oh, you've been even emailing my wife? Literally punches his, him out. She's pissed. So she's doing, she's like hitting him, you know, not hard. So she looks crazy. So then the, the doctor fires her. And he's like, what? You're going to fire my wife now? Yeah, bro, because you started all this. So then they leave. And like a big baby who can't emo won't emotionally regulate, he takes off his wedding ring, throws it away, and then goes looking for it. So then they cut back to one of these scenes where he's just gotten beat up and he meets her parents. We find out that he didn't even know his mom. And he never even graduated high school. You know, because it's just not all that's cracked up to be. Poo-poo, stupid people who go to high school. But she's the smartest person I've ever met. And then she starts talking about her school and this teacher she had. And he starts laughing. And her dad's like, what's so funny, Dean? He's like, no, nothing. And her mom's like, she wants to be a doctor. And basically, this man is, this is what insecure men do. He's a hobo schedule with no work prospects. He, he has all kinds of trauma he hasn't dealt with. And rather than being alone and actually working on himself, he is desperate for love. He's a hopeless romance. And then he finds this amazing woman who is trying to make her life good, who's being screwed over by 
all the men in her life and he constantly cuts her down you're too pretty to be a duck oh he makes fun of her teacher this is what this is I'm telling you do not date insecure men with no ambition they will literally ruin your life and they will hate you for being successful and punish you and mooch off of you and when she's trying to break up with him he's like you're not even thinking about your daughter she's like no I am is this how you want her to grow up in a broken home she's like I don't want her to watch people who love each other treat them each other like this I'm trying to fight for my family really why don't you stop drinking bro tell me what to do I'll do anything she's already told you stop drinking stop being so such a worthless piece of crap like I'm so sorry I don't know what else to do bro this is why every single man who gets broken up with and divorced their wives divorce them they're all like oh, it came out of nowhere she just gave up on her marriage I fought for him no You've been literally getting drunk every day, sleeping in your throne in the living room, smoking all day, drinking all day. You literally have no ambition. You won't push yourself. She's growing and he is staying the same or regressing. And women are tired of it. They're tired of having to be these men's cheerleaders, trying to push them to be better and do better. She's literally laid it out and he hates her. He hates her because she has ambition, she's motivated, she makes a better life for herself, and he won't. And then he's pissed that she's not grateful that he chose this life even though he never wanted it. Fork you, bro. You wanted a woman you could hide behind. You wanted a woman who would make you feel good. You got the pretty girl even though you didn't deserve her. But you swooped in when she was really vulnerable and was screwed over and had got pregnant by that awful man. This is why I'm telling you, please don't date people. Don't date anybody when you are feeling not good about yourself, when you're vulnerable, when you're, you know, um, between jobs, when, when your heart uh, broken over some other dude. Don't do it because any man that swoops in, you're not going to see the red flag. This man had so many red flags and she was even like a jerk to him in the beginning because she was annoyed by him and he won her over. Why? Because her other prospect, by comparison, he looked great and she was pregnant and didn't know what to do. And this man was there and he made her think he was going to take care of her. And all he's done is been a vampire who sucked the life out of her and he, emotionally abusive. Please stop giving men the benefit of the doubt and marrying their potential. If a man does not believe in himself, you know, like we're so good at being cheerleaders to these men. Come on, you can do it. You're so smart. Now, granted, that's what couples are supposed to do for each other. If y'all, y'all should equally be doing that. But so many men are not our cheerleaders. All they do is pull us down. All this man did was criticize her, make fun of her, except called her beautiful. That's it. And she's his cheerleader. She believed in him. And why? He didn't do anything. He didn't want to do anything. He thought playing games with the kid and just being there and working was enough that's not enough you deserve to be alone if that's what you think love is is just showing up and doing the bare minimum fork off you don't deserve a partner because men have been raised to just extract every single bit of labor from us oh my god look at his lips <laughs> and they will beg you till the very end please stay please give me a chance please please and she's like no and god help you if you have a child with them because this is how you get really screwed. This child wants her dad. Of course she does. He's fun. She doesn't know that her father is scaring the crap out of her mom at work and getting her fired. She doesn't know that he is literally draining the life out of her. All she sees is like a, man, a dad. And I used to be so mad at her for leaving him. I thought this was the worst ending to this story ever. But now when I look back, this woman's a hero. I am, this is literally the happiest ending ever was leaving this man. And even though her kid was like, I love him. And she's like, I know. I can't, I, I know a woman who is a single mom. And she dates the worst men and she introduces these men to her kid and they fall in love with these men. And then when she finally realizes that this man is actually awful and not a good partner, then it breaks her kids, the kid's heart. And then they pressure her to stay with this man who sucks, which is another reason why you probably shouldn't be introducing your kids to men you're dating until you are sure this man's a great partner. And even still, stop trying to find somebody 
to parent your child because I swear to God, these men will use their children to trap you. He literally was like trying to use the kid to make her not break up with him. He's an abusive piece of crap. And I can't believe that I thought he was like the good guy and she was the jerk. I can't believe that. I can't believe that. I had a lot of healing to do. This movie is one of the best movies I've ever seen in portraying generational trauma, cycles of abuse, and the way that men dehumanize women in their relationships and will not work on themselves. And if you hook up with one of these men and link your life to this man, he will literally drain the life out of you, financially ruin you, possibly ruin your career, possibly unalive you, possibly unalive you through your nervous system alone if he never lays a hand on you. These men are not worth it. They're parasites. Please don't fall for their trick. This is not a love story. This is a horror film. A reality, a reality TV show on what most marriages are like in this day and age because men won't grow up.